Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now it's time to take our next hot topic that talks about grassroots governance, the true face of national development. True governance does not begin in high offices or national policies. It begins in our villages, our towns, and our local communities, where the ordinary Nigerian wakes up each day striving for a better life. And to talk about the true face of this national development is Oluwa Tomisi Adebukola Badewoli. She's Executive Director of Hope for the Masses Foundation. Good morning, Ma. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and good to be here. It's good to be on your show this morning. Thank you so much. All right, so we're talking about grassroots governance and it's the true face for national development. Can you work us through that? What is grassroots governance for people that don't know? And how does it even impact, you know, the social and economic, um, uh, you know, outcomes of our society, of our communities right now? Uh, thank you very much. Once again, uh, when we people talk about grassroots governance, people tend to say, I'm not part of the grassroots, mm. especially uh, people at the higher level or maybe the middle class level of the social uh, strata of our dead nation. People don't tend to think that only the um, I don't want to use the word less privileged. I want to think mm. that only the people at the lower cadre and the people in the villages and all of that um, form or the grassroots. You see, the word grassroots actually talks about our communities, our local communities, and every single person, including our dear president, Tinobu, is from the grassroots. He is actually a grassroots politician because he has a community, he has a village, he has a place where he goes to vote, he has a polling unit. So all of that connotes grassroots. Mm. Now, the truth is, when we pay attention to what happens in the cities, when we pay attention to what happens in the capital, we tend to not develop at optimum. So this is exactly what it is. Let me give you a typical example. If all the development that is being done in every state in Nigeria is focused at the capital, can you compare Ibadan, for example, your state? Can you compare Ibadan to Hussein? Or, or can you compare Ibadan to Ibuwa? Can you compare Abel Kuta to Shagam? Or can you compare Abel Kuta to Ota or Ilalu? Mm. Can you compare um, Akure to Iduani? Mm. Or can you? So this is exactly what it is. Once you leave Lafia in Masarawa, Akwanga is the next community that has some semblance of development, but I call it a semblance mm. of development. So this is what we're saying. Our communities, our developmental focus as a nation seems to be on the capital cities, on the bigger communities, on the bigger cities. And cities don't develop because um, the government is doing a lot. Sometimes the people from those communities who grew up there, who are from there, who become rich, go back home to invest in their communities. So until we begin to pay attention to the little communities, the small villages, the small man in his corner, in the various local governments, wards across our nation, we will not experience the kind of national development that we all are asking for. Mm. So in speaking about, um, because you've just said it, we cannot get that if we're not really looking at our communities or local communities. But of course, we need sustainable development goals. And I'm sure we should have that, you know, as a country. So now how does this impact? How, do, how does this, um, you know, this, I would say local governance now, this whole grassroots governance, how does it start to impact, you know, when it comes to healthcare, infrastructure, education in every sector? How do you, how does it benefit all of these people coming from the grassroots okay so let me let me run you through quickly the function of the local governments in nigeria mm. according to the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria if i run you through uh, the, the the function first of all do you know that maintenance of road is vested in the local government mm. are you aware that the local government is meant to be part of an economic council that will make recommendations to the state government 
has to uh, as to what they need to develop and when mm. as to what the needs of the people are and what their investments should look like in our economy are you also aware that primary health care um education at the primary the adults the vocational level is vested in the local government mm. collection of legs and taxes maintenance of our of our uh, mod, mods um, public uh, public uh, facilities are vested in the local government now the question i would ask you is have you seen any local government do all of these things no in fact um, it's the state governors that actually rule the affairs of you know everything you've just mentioned now, the idea is this, if the primary, as a matter of what they do when it comes to primary health care, for those who even do something there, it's just to renovate the building, mm -hmm. and maybe make provisions once in a while, or we bought a bed for them, or we just did this for them. The maintenance of the primary health care center, that first level of health care that anyone should be able to walk in and get, is vested in the local government. Our local government chairman, our local government system actually needs to work for our nation to adequately develop. The truth is, we will not focus. We have bigger fish, you know, bigger fish to fry. The mm. governor should have bigger fish to fry. The, the, the president should have bigger fish to fry. But the president is going to have his minister focus on the tertiary hospitals the state governor will focus on the general hospitals and then we still do not get optimum care mm. in most of these places a typical example a friend was talking to me over the weekend and mentioned the idea that they needed a particular machine to call to to um do a procedure for her brother in luth mm. lagos university teaching hospital, hospital. Yeah. tertiary hospital belonging to the federal government the tertiary hospital or the teaching hospital of the university of lagos federal government owned yeah. and they said the singular machine that they have for that procedure is faulty mm -hmm. and it is being fixed now until that machine is fixed it cannot have that procedure in the hospital the only other option that it has is to go to a private hospital which he cannot afford mm. so if you see the problem if the job of the federal is to focus on tertiary health care and the state would focus on secondary healthcare then the local government needs to work on primary health care mm -hmm. which means immunization uh, treatment of small diseases in fact delivery of babies up to the cs mm -hmm. is the syrian section mm -hmm. can be done at the primary health care center mm -hmm. i went for a tetanus shot some time ago in the primary health care center in my lcda and I met only one person. There was only one person on duty. Wow. She was the person at the entrance. She was the one who administered the car. She was the one who got the jab. And she was wow. the one who also jabbed me. She was the only one in that entire facility that day. Hmm. And I was there for at least one and a half hours. <laughs> You know, is is we have met. So this is not, and I'm using Lagos as an example because when looking at a state whose local government chairman enjoy mm. autonomy financially, financial autonomy. The rest of the nation is talking about financial autonomy right now. Lagos chairman have always enjoyed financial autonomy. Mm. It's a different ballgame here. So there are certain level of uh, commitment, of development that is expected of local governments and the LCDs in Lagos that we are not seeing because they are still not performing at optimum. And I strongly believe that it is because they're truly not educated in what their responsibilities are. Mm. Your responsibility is not to buy cars for all of your um, appointees. Yeah. Because Your responsibility is to make sure that the man in the corner of your street is okay. 
Your responsibility is to ensure that that young boy who does not have or whose parents cannot afford to buy a school uniform for him has school uniform, books to go to school. I mean, we did a survey of schools in Lagos. My foundation did that. And we found pupils who write one, one book like this, just one notebook. And they use this one notebook for three subjects. <laughs> This education is meant to be free at the right. primary level mm -hmm. for our pupils. If okay. they do not focus on making sure that these things are done, give them uniforms, give them books, and don't just say that you give them last term. Do these things because it is Again. your responsibility yeah. Yeah. and it is what you're meant to give to them. Yeah. Every man, every woman, every child, irrespective of age, is the responsibility of the local government. But if our local governments don't function, then our people will not develop. Yes. As long as you have more than 70% of your population under the middle class level, meaning at the lower class level, then our nation is going nowhere. We're just going to remain where we are. So we need to develop from the ground up, from the bottom yeah. up, raise the lives of people, All right. improve their lives, yeah. improve their opportunities. And then our nation will gradually begin to see the kind of development that we all are crying for. Right. I mean, I love the fact that you've spoken so well and you've even highlighted some of the challenges that we currently have. But where do we go from here? Of course, we need certain reforms. We need certain policies um, just to strengthen the grassroots um, governance because it starts from there. That's, that's, that's where it should begin from. And then it rises to the top. So bottom to top. So what are some things that you would recommend recommend that we need to start doing now so not just from the government of course the government has a huge role to play but even as citizens how do we all just put our hands in the plow to ensure that you know we have this better nation that we want um especially when it comes to national development all right let's begin with the first responsibility government local governments now have autonomy the right. um, federal allocation committee is going to, accounts allocation committee is going to um, pay them directly this month. That's what everybody is expecting. We need to beg our state governors to allow this to work. Mm. And I'm setting aside our dear governor in Lagos, Governor Babaji de Sangwolo, because that has always been. Yeah. You get it. So I'm looking at a 35 state governors plus the fct and i'm asking begging pleading that they allow this to work we've seen people going about um, having the national assembly uh, conjure up laws and to pass laws that contravene the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria our president is not bigger than our constitution as a people our president submits to the constitution so no governor Mm. can be above the constitution all right no house of assembly is above the constitution you can make if you make a law that is against the constitution you are actually going to that law should be thrown in the bean that's exactly what the constitution says mm. the substantive law that is in the constitution takes effect takes precedence so this is what we need to do allow the local government financial autonomy to work so that we can hold them as citizens all to right question. thank you so we can ask them mm -hmm. to do the right thing all citizens right. we can't sit on the sidelines anymore we have to start asking the right questions we have to go to our local government chairman make recommendations tell them what we need in our communities and then sit on their back until they do it all that right. is the way to participate in a working democracy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. I hope that people are going to rise up to the challenge. We're going to demand accountability, sorry, sorry. transparency. We're going to demand what we really want. And of course, ask the right questions, like you said. Sit on I'm their back them. to ensure. We're not, we're not abusing them. We're not abusing them. Yes. We're asking yes. politely yes. for what is due us. That's exactly. right. That's right. Thank you so much, Ma. This is where we have to wrap it it's up here. It's been a pleasure, John. You're on the breakfast this morning. Thank you. You have a lovely day. You too. Have a wonderful day, Ma.
Over to speaking with Oluwa Tomisi Adebukola Badewale. She's the executive director of Hope for the Masses Foundation. And we've just been talking about grassroots governance that is the true face of national development. This is where we have to call it today on The Breakfast Show. Thank you so much for having The Breakfast with me. My name is Rome Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.